Aloha, I am your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted that you're joining us today for this Out and About special show where every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any uh, of the things that I say are strictly uh, my own opinions and not connected with any organization that I might have uh, been associated with or that I am currently associated with. That said, I am delighted today to have a very special guest, uh, Aurelia Gonzalez, who is a Master of Science student uh, of Natural Resources and Environmental Management at the University of Hawaii. Uh, Aurelia is also a member of Protect Our Alawai Watershed and President of Hawaii Streams and Ecosystems. So thank you so much for coming onto the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to be here. Well, uh, we were just talking before the show, and we mm -hmm. and we've met and talked about these these issues um, of yeah. of the, the the watershed, especially. And you have some uh, special expertise and knowledge about ecosystem restoration and uh, and, and green infrastructure. Um, and That's so, correct. And and we will be talking about that. And I think it's in this larger context of the. Protect our watershed, Olawai. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Protect our Olawai watershed. Um, group that's formed yeah. to sort of um, give some alternatives to the Army Corps plan that's currently being presented as this, you know, 100-year flood model. Is, is that? Yes, yeah. So it's a little bit of a backstory. There is a um, proposed project, the Alawai Flood Mitigation Project, and, and that's how I became a part of Protect Our Alawai Watersheds, that working group. Um, so the proposed plan is to have seven um, or six uh, debris dams up into our upper watershed for the uh, Alawai watershed. So that would be Makiki, Manoa, Palolo streams. Um, and then going towards the Waikiki area, there would be some de de detention basins. They also want to raise the, f the flood wall for the Alawai canal. And, and the project has been, really hasn't been uh, no, there wasn't properly notified to the community, and so a lot of people and stakeholders of that area feel pretty discouraged at, that the Army Corps um, kind of passed this project, and the city um, had the opportunity to, get, to gain some money for this project, but the, the stakeholders weren't properly involved. And I believe that the environmental impact statement uh, could have been done uh, quite differently. Um, and so I'm pretty passionate about other softer alternatives and I, as a student um, of natural resources and environmental management, I, we've been taught that there are other solutions out there. But our municipalities aren't really adopting these, these uh, forward thinking solutions and we're still adopting um, outdated concrete infrastructure. And so um, I'd like to talk to a little bit today about green infrastructure and how that provides not only economic or uh, environmental benefits, but also economic and cultural uh, benefits to mm -hmm. our community. Yeah, uh, that's I th it encapsulates it well. And, and you said that, that the EIS, uh, the environmental impact statement, is, is maybe based on some old modeling or mm -hmm. some uh, uh, outdated ideas. Um, yeah, and, and I, I think that there is a piece also that they want to, you know, they want to offset and mitigate for their impacts in this project. Um, and I think they've proposed to remove some smaller weirs. Um, but actually, if you talk to people who work in these streams, you know, these smaller weirs, um, they're actually holding back invasive species up, um, holding them back, and so they don't go in, further into our watershed um, upstream. And what is a weir for the people that don't know so that? So a weir is like a small dam. It's, um, it's a concrete wall in, in going across a stream. It's a barrier uh, for fish migration. And so a lot of people typically want these things removed, and it's good to have them removed. Um, but in some cases, they actually retain invasive species um, to certain areas. And so you, you can actually manage for invasive species um, to that idea. Um, for instance, here in Hawaii, it's specific that we have gobies that can climb walls. We have our, you know, we only have uh, five endemic fish um, in the state of Hawaii, and these are our gobies, and they have sucker mouths. And then so they These are freshwater fish, right? Freshwater fish, okay. of course. Um, so there are only freshwater fish, and they have a specialty to climb up waterfalls, and they use the sucker mouth. 
So here in Hawaii, weirs actually, um, you know, they still allow the passage, small weirs allow passage of, um, of some of these gobies, but um, keep invasive species like tilapia um, further downstream. So, so like, let's engage in this conversation with the community of like, what, what, what is occurring? You know, you know, we don't want detention. Um, we don't want dams in our stream. We don't, we don't really want um, issues with fish migration and passage. Um, but let's have the full story so we can make proper decisions. And I think that uh, what this, this group was born of was this frustration that this thing was rushed. It, it didn't have totally properly communi community input. Yeah. Seven out of eight neighborhood boards in the affected watershed, and I believe it's a 19 square mile watershed or something like that, just from the everything that drains into the Alawai mm -hmm. um, watershed basin. So uh, seven out of eight neighborhood boards asked for the Senate to not give matching funds for this, uh, yeah, for the that's city. Uh, the, the city council asked for a, a study um, and to put a pause on this as well. That's correct. But the, the mayor and the governor have sort of gone around and, and they're issuing some, or looking at issuing some, uh, some cops, which are a, a, a financing vehicle for this. But essentially, there's been so much community pushback that the ocean did a study and said, this thing was rushed. It was, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it, and not, we certainly don't want to disparage our, our good colleagues and friends in the city and at the Army Corps of Engineers because they were doing the best they could, but they were probably were relying on some outdated model. And, and it seems like it's this one got picked off the shelf pretty quickly. And, and when they got money for Puerto Rico, this was, I think, sandwiched in there. So people didn't want to lose the money. But at some point, maybe we got to think, what are we really giving up here? Because this is a half a billion dollar project from the start and really little community input. So Protect Our Alawai Watersheds mm -hmm. was formed to... Um, counter this. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for tying us back to that group, so. Uh, and maybe, actually, we're going to have a, a forum on next week, right? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is our forum uh, flyer. Uh, these are some speakers that are going to be out um, at this forum. Uh, so this is a grassroots-led forum. Uh, people working in the watershed who have alternative methods, who want to be heard, who do science in the Alawai watershed, um, people like, uh, you know, uh, our, you know our, water, our water keepers, we have folks coming out to speak about green infrastructure, current stream monitoring in the Alawai watershed, so that would be members of like Protect Our Watershed, or Protect Our Alawai Watershed. And so that's going to be at the golf club um, house uh, the, on October 29th. Which uh, is a Tuesday. Which is a Tuesday. Tuesday night, so a week from tomorrow. Yes. Uh, at 6.30. Yes. 8.30, it said. And the Alawai Golf Course Clubhouse. Yes. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, on the, so, uh, the, uh, it's the, the ballroom upstairs, so on the second floor. Plenty of parking. Yes, and that'll be at 6.30. So, at that's, 6:30 so that's in the evening, so folks that are working can come and attend and, and to listen to um, what the community has to offer as far as like wanting to be heard and alternatives that it, the Army Corps should, you uh, know, adopt. And hopefully they'll be attending there and listening to that as well. And this is really interesting because you're having this spontaneous community of groups coming together and saying, hey, here's all these really wonderful ideas that maybe you guys haven't considered and these are really important for us. So let's just put it back on well, the table. We, we teach our kids and, and our, our professionals, you know, at our universities that these methods don't uh, work or in the long term. We, you know, for, as far as ecosystem services and the cleaning up. And, and so, yeah, I think people are pretty upset that, hey, we have, there's, there's science out there that that proves otherwise that we can adopt these these other um, these projects. And I, I I was talking with a friend yesterday, and she said the old model, maybe when I was younger, was about command and control, whether mm -hmm. it was employees or um, the government or whatever. It's okay. This is what you do, and this is how you do it. But we've moved away from that a, a lot in our society and in how we do education, mm -hmm. raise children, even. And it's about collaboration. It's about um, yes. input. It's about negotiations yeah. and 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 real buy-in because when the community is, doesn't buy in we're seeing this all over oahu i think where this the city or the state have said this is what we're going to do whether it's mauna kea or bellows or oh yeah um, that's the, exactly what's happening in this story yeah and then the same for this right uh, right 
that we are bypassing community engagement and uh, neighborhood needs. Um, opportunities are going to be missed if, if uh, people just pass this plan as is and, uh, instead of um, you know, incorporating the things that we have been taught and learn uh, to make forward thinking ideas and solutions. I mean, this could be a model, if, if Hawaii can do this the right way, it would be an, a great model um, for um, collaborative thinking and, and you know, having protection of property and, and business, but also doing it in the right way um, with community engagement um, and economic services. That's a great, it's great to hear that. And uh, are you feeling hopeful at this point about that, that the community is actually going to be listened to and heard and that these ideas will be incorporated in? Uh, or maybe some of them might? Or um... I'm, I'm really happy that Protect uh, Our water, our Alawai Watershed, that group has formed and this forum is going to be well attended. And, but I, you know, I hope so. I think that I do have, um, you know, some optimism and that, and that maybe Oceanet will bring, you know, really look into what we say and put some cost, do a cost and benefit analysis. I mean, we really need folks working on the numbers um, on some of these things and not just ideas, but to, sh to actually show the benefits long term. Um, and so if we can do that, I think it would be pretty impactful. However, you know, in my experience, people just, the process is listen to the community, and then once they have that box checked, they're still going to go on and do the project. So um, I, I really hope that, that that doesn't happen in this case, and I feel like uh, there's some loud voices that I think that can, can turn that. But um, are, you, are you thinking we're seeing something different here? Because I, I, you know, I've been in Hawaii mm -hmm. a, a while, and I don't remember the community rising up like this on so many issues around good, the island. Good, all, that, good. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's all across us saying, no, we don't, we don't want this. Um, are, you, is it, are we in a different time period where people are just wanting their voices to be heard? Or well, they? it's practice. I mean, you know, I think it's a new practice that people are actually doing active listening um, and, and, and doing social studies around what people are saying and incorporating that into city planning. Um, those are new practices. And I think that with those practices being properly implemented, yeah, I think that they can make great examples of how that's done. Um, and maybe that's what we're on the fringe of, of of that, the old ways and these new ways, and they're you know kind of clashing, but yeah, this is the first time I have seen a group organized uh, and with so many you know voices to that uh, they said no, we don't want this project. We have alternatives. These are the people that see these alternatives. It's time, and yeah, maybe we're on the fringe of that. Um, that battle. Well, I hope so. And as I think maybe it's the trickle up theory and the, uh, the, <laughs> that we're getting young people that are finding yes. science based yeah. alternatives that say, okay, the way that we had it, that was the best we knew then, but mm -hmm. now we have a different way that, that we, that's better. You know, mm -hmm. in the old days, that's like you said, babies were, you said, oh, put them on their stomach, and now, nope, we leave them on their backs. And so yeah. we, we, we went with the best that we had. So Hopefully, our friends at um, in the city and the state and uh, and the and the Army Corps of Engineers will will step back a little bit and say, well, maybe we can learn something from uh, from what's percolating up and what the incorporating these community concerns. So we were going to go for a break here, but again, I wanted to put up about the um, this forum that's coming next week on Tuesday, October 29th. It's going to be a forum for alternatives to the Alawai flood mitigation project. Totally grassroots. 6.30 to 8.30, uh, do you know how many, at the Alawai Golf Course Clubhouse, which is, um, I don't know, at the Alawai Golf Course, uh, exactly, there's great parking there. It's a two-hour show. It's going to be broadcast on Olelo as well, on channel, I don't know what channel it is, but um, I think you can, it says 30, I think that's 30 years, but it's going to be on Olelo. Do you uh, know how many speakers are going to be there approximately? I think there's going to be at least 15. 15 speakers, speakers. so yeah. each one's going to have about five minutes and there's going to be booths there and lots of time to get yes. and to also to get input from the public and say maybe somebody has a great idea that we 
that, that hasn't been considered as well. Yeah, there'll be um, just as many tables as there will be speakers. Okay. So there this will is, be plenty. This is the start of the dialogue that was missing in that the community's been feeling missing. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's been a great pleasure to have a young lady who's teaching us how to be collaborative and and work um, on these issues that are really important here, especially when we're looking at spending a half a billion dollars and that would be the conservative estimate, uh, and really tearing up the the, the echo uh, the, the ecology of the land, really, mm -hmm. and and putting in things that may not have been wanted by uh, folks that are living there. So we're, when we come back, we're going to explore some of those and look at what the the flood modeling is, because we do want people and property protected. Of course, nobody is saying that we don't want to do that. We just want to do it the right way with the best practices that we've got today. So um, I am with Aurelia Gonzalez, who is a Master of uh, Science student at UH of Natural Resources and Environmental Management. She's a member of Protect Our Alawai Watershed and President of Hawaii Streams and Ecosystems. We'll be back in a moment with more of the story. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Aloha, we are back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch and this is Out and About on the Think Tech live streaming network series. And today we are talking with Aurelia Gonzalez, who is a Master of Science student at the University of Hawaii studying natural resources and environmental management. She's a member of Protect Our Alawai Watersheds and president of Hawaii Streams and Ecosystems. And it's delighted, uh, I'm delighted to have you back here. Thank you, thank so, you. Uh, we are talking about that next week for the folks that are listening at home on mm -hmm. Uh, Tuesday, October 29th from 6.30 to 8.30. We're going to have a forum presented by Protect Our Alawai Watersheds with a whole bunch yes. of other groups coming in here, right? Uh, about, yep. you said, 15 or 20 groups, and they're going to all speak for a pretty strict amount of time. There's going to yes. be a lot of booze available, yeah. so people are going to be able to come in and give their two cents. We're going to have an alternative kind of informal um, it's just Chautauqua with folks that come and share their ideas, right. to hear ideas, to spark some things, and maybe... This will bleed back up into the powers that be, and we're just going to start a real dialogue here that results in a really well thought out plan that protects people, property, and maybe restores some ecosystems here. Yes, that's correct. Um, so just to give people at home an idea of what we're looking at, if we could look at the first slide here, um, this is what we're looking at. So this is from the final EIS, which was produced, the Environmental Impact Statement, by the Army Corps of Engineers. And so if you look at the... The one on the left there, that's the 10-year flood model uh, showing, well, what's supposed to happen every 10 years. Now, if you lived in Hawaii an amount of time, you know that that's never happened. So, the but let's just give it a go and say on the right-hand side is the 100-year flood model. And they say it's not an if, it's a when. Okay, we, I can go with that. We do get rain bombs, weather's crazy now. But Iolani School states that a lack of scientific integrity should be rejected and it's clear that the scientific analysis, modeling, and methodology are flawed and cannot be relied upon. That is in this study here. So when Iolani School, pretty smart people there, they are obviously in an impacted zone. Yes. Uh, as are these seven out of eight neighborhood boards. It said, no. Don't fund this right. plan. It's it's it's. We need more time, more community right. input, more study. So that's the the well, that's what the army is trying to the army corps is trying to protect against. So you know the protection idea, great idea. We want to protect people and property. Um, but let's look at the next slide there, and we'll say because so this is a little bit closer. Um, 
look at this. And so this, you see there, um, Alamo, uh, Waikiki is protected here, right? Mm -hmm. So this is with the wall built. Now, but where Iolani is and the other... Where Iolani, the golf course, uh -huh. all the way back to the freeway, it looks like, um, up on Dole, um, looks like where Market City is, and then across the university there, too. Yeah. Uh, lots of flooding there back in Manoa, in Palolo, in... Um, yeah, the athletes department looks... Underwater. Flooded, underwater, even houses Kaka along... Kakaako, um, I'm sorry, not Kakaako, Keamoku, um, all the way over to McKinley High School and up to King. You've got a lot of neighborhoods surrounding this are underwater uh, with this plan built. So yeah. you can see why people are saying, wait a minute, okay, so we protect the economic engine of Hawaii. And sacrificing everything else. It's not a well thought out plan that doesn't mm -hmm. protect everyone. We want some, um, I guess, uh, fairness here, you know, right. and spread this around and make sure that we're getting the right thing in there. So at the next one, maybe is a closer up of what we're looking at as well with the debris dam. So on the left, you have what it looks like, and on the right, you have what it would look like. So sort of just wholesale. Right, and and most people are familiar with these debris dams because we are we have some already, but um, they're overgrown and they're not maintained. Mm -hmm. So the debris dams that we currently have, um, they already pose issues uh, with our watershed, um, and that could be because they're unmaintained. Um, they're just, a, in my opinion, a lost cause. Um, they're supposed to retain. Um, down trees and water that are coming from the mountains um, to, to not block uh, the stream system. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a maintenance issue when it comes to that. So why propose six new ones, six more of them? You know, who's going to maintain these if we already have some that aren't being maintained and the community has issues uh, with them? But people are saying, okay, but we got to protect our keiki and the property and um, the, the Manoa flood. Mm -hmm. Right where it went through the university was right. this a was this like one of these dams that just got so blocked up? Or? That was actually a, a maintenance issue, um, and it was on city and county for you know, and it got blocked up because the the area was not being properly maintained, mm -hmm. um, and so a, a lot of people say, oh, we, these debris dams are supposed to pro, you know protect um, from another Manoa flood happening. Um, but it, it's really a maintenance issue. These, you know, we don't have the workforce uh, and the money to maintain the current infrastructure. And now we're adding on to that infrastructure. Requirements. Yes. Okay, and, and it's, it didn't work then, so why more more of the same? Okay, and then the last one we have here is uh, a, an example of uh, the Hokulani Elementary School. They didn't even know about this project. As, again, a key stakeholder, they're downstream. That is one of the detention uh, basins, basins yeah. that is planned there um, from the, the EIS there. So, um, And the this, neighborhoods on the bottom and the other side of that wall said that they were not informed and, and communicated with. And do you want that kind of amount of water right behind you? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's scary. And if the, a levee breaks. If the levee breaks or, or what happens. So uh, we've got some other other options that that you might be proposing here, and one of these is green infrastructure. What is green infrastructure? Yeah, so green infrastructure is man-made designs. Uh, they really it, encompass a lot of different ideas. So this can be anywhere from tra planting trees to mulching areas, um, having just more green space, but it could also be like large underground uh, retention areas, um, storage tanks. Um, things that sit uh, against a building uh, that are, you know, 10 stories high that would store water and slowly uh, percolate that water out. So it, it's an, a way of controlling the, the sheer volume and energy of stormwater. That is mainly the issue, is that, um, that with our current infrastructure, uh, we have concreted streets, we have concreted neighborhoods, and we have concreted canals. And this doesn't allow water to naturally percolate and infiltrate into the aquifer. Um, and so what happens is you have a surge of stormwater that causes flooding, it's a, a health um, issue, you have concentrated forms of pollution. So green infrastructure would retain, restore, possibly filter that water. Um, so it's to a, a manageable degree. Um, so, and in, I believe in full force that we could 
we could protect property and we could protect lives with implementing these solutions. And, and the city's behind, but we're on a track possibly to get us there uh, with our new stormwater management fee, but we have to direct um, the people making decisions to make the proper decisions. Um, currently, I think people want to use our future stormwater management fee to maintain the infrastructure that we currently have. Like I mentioned, we have a maintenance issue. Um, so, but ideally, um, stormwater utilities fees are supposed to promote forward thinking solutions like green infrastructure that, that promote uh, environmental, social, and cultural benefits for all. Um, and it's not just another form of getting some money to do something that we're already supposed to do. It's, it's a, a form of, of having a new uh, bowl of money to do, to do forward thinking projects, to, to, to elevate our cities into sustainable management, which we were required. Um, and we have so many, um, you know, goals to hit that we publicize. And, and, and that's what I really feel like this stormwater fee should be used for, is, is helping us reach these goals, um, not to maintain things that we should already be doing. The status quo. And so yeah. you're talking about things like the Clean Water Act or uh, other considerations by the uh, EPA or our, even yes. our own and the health department? Or, uh, yes, so mainly by the EPA and the Department of Health. And so... Um, we have compliance uh, with our current, um, our, our system, which is, we call an MS Force system. It's a, is that rainwater and sewage are separate systems, um, and that rainwater goes directly to the ocean. So it hits our streets, gathers pollution trash, and then goes straight to the stream, and then the, the stream goes to the ocean, which causes um, reef issues, browning events, things like that. Um, and so we have the obligation to make sure that these waters are, um, are not polluted before they go out into the stream. And we don't have a really good practice of doing that. Do you, uh, is, it, is it possible to integrate maybe some of these ideas like a, a, a detention basin that's not being used most of the time along with some of these green practices? Yeah, um, so the, the detention basin that you showed in a park is actually um, although they would have some stakeholders that are pretty upset, it is a, it, it is a form of green infrastructure. It's a way of retaining water um, and allowing that water to slowly percolate. It's an, it's an idea, so it could be a pilot idea. Maybe that's not something that we want to go with, but maybe we're okay with underground storage. Um, and then we want to talk about, okay, well, where's the water table? Where's, you know, you know where can we do underground storage? Um, so, yeah. Okay, and there's going to be a lot of ideas that are presented at this forum. Yes. Uh, which you're part of the group, uh, Protect Our Alawai Watersheds. Yes, I will be speaking. If you guys would like to learn more, please, I'll be there. You will be speaking, and that is next Tuesday, October 29th, at the Alawai Golf Course mm -hmm. uh, Clubhouse and the, on the second floor. It's going to be at 6.30 at night. Where you're going to be speaking with about 15 other groups. Um, mm -hmm. Just... Sparking the mind and getting some some juices yeah. flowing. There's going to be kids. It's going to be a fun event. It's going to be a friendly event. We're just going to be sharing with each other. It's n it's not a one way thing. It's a it's a learning on both ways. So someone may yes. come up to you and say, "Have you thought about this, that, or right. the other?" So your brain is going to be sparking that day too. Right. And a lot of people say that green infrastructure doesn't protect you against a hundred year flood. And of course, a rain barrel, something that you have at your house you know, it's gonna overflow in a, in a large storm. And of course, your, your, con, you know, your rain garden that, you know, your nonprofit and you helps design in your neighborhood, it's not gonna protect against a 100-year flood. But if, if we, which we will, we will be forced um, to, to adopt some of these on our private property, um, we're going to be taxed by the amount of imperme impermeable surface that we have on our property. And so, more people are going to start to think about this, and I think that with that, um, in large magnitude, we can get water off of um, the streets and to be a, a, a flooding issue. And more sustainable and green as we go along. And yes. even with the plan that's presented now, it's not going it, to, we saw those areas that would still be flooded under the, right. the, the Army Corps plan, so it's time to incorporate some of these other ideas and see if we can't reduce that impact as well. And, and, 
and, right. and get and get caught up to where we are in 2020 right. almost with the with the best practices that we've got out there. Right. And like you said, maybe we'll maybe we'll be the the model for the rest of the country and 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 incorporate this here and, and share it with the rest of the world. I uh, would encourage all of uh, my viewers and uh, those that want to hear Aurelia speak to come out next week, October 29th at okay. 6.30 at the Alawai um, Golf Course for a forum for alternatives to the Alawai Flood Mitigation Project. This is a great opportunity for community involvement. It's mm -hmm. paving the way forward so that we can show it's the kind of society that we want to live in where people right. are engaged and engaging. And uh, I appreciate you stepping up to the plate. And um, unfortunately, we are out of time. Our, sh our time is always very short. I love talking about the issue and would be happy to answer anybody's questions. Okay, they, I encourage everyone to come out. Okay, and they can do that there. Or maybe you'll come back on and we'll, this, this issue's not going anywhere. Oh, we, yeah, we've got years so uh, on this. So uh, it's been a great pleasure to have you on the show. Thank and, you. And it has been my pleasure, especially to be talking with Aurelia Gonzalez, who's a master science student of natural resources and environmental management at UH. She's a member of Protect Our Alawai Watersheds and president of Hawaii Streams and Ecosystems. So we look forward to seeing a lot more here her on the show. I'm Winston Welch. This is uh, me signing out of Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. And a big shout out and thanks to our broadcast engineer, floor manager, and all around great guy, Eric Kalander, who uh, puts it all together for us today and all the other good folks, uh, Haley and Robert and Jay uh, here at uh, Think Tech. I'll see you every other Monday at three for more of Out and About. Aloha, everyone.